Yo, you're probably using VS Code wrong, but that's okay because today I'll be revealing the ultimate settings and extensions for VS Code slash cursor that will enhance your development productivity. I'll also show you the various themes I've used over the years that make this editor look sick. I can't guarantee you'll get more than zero users on your next side project, but I can at least give my word that all of these changes have made, have made coding more enjoyable and helped me to build things a lot faster. I'm going to take you from a fresh install to what I believe is the ultimate VS code setup. While I'm using cursor, which is a VS code fork, everything I mentioned in this video will still apply regardless of what you use. Though later in the video, I will talk a bit about why I've been using cursor as my main web development editor. The first thing I like to do when configuring the editor is improve the styling. The default look of VS code is fine, but a little bland in my opinion. With just a few changes, we can make this look a lot better. First, for the theme, I've used a few over the last year, and I like to change mine fairly often just to have a different vibe. Right now, I'm using Vesper, which you can get by going to the Extensions tab and searching its name. I'm using the top result from Rauno Freiburg. By the way, I'm going to have links to all of the themes and extensions that I mentioned down in the description. Just having set this theme already makes the editor look 10 times better. I love the dark and orange vibes this one has. If you're looking for an even cleaner theme, Minimal from Nishabash is one I used for quite some time and liked a lot. The last theme is one I've used very recently, and this is Poimandres. It has a sick dark blue vibe to it. All right, next I like to configure a custom file icon theme, and symbols is one I think looks really good. The colors here are vibrant, and each icon has a clean design. Now, I like to throw my sidebar onto the right side, and you can do this by searching for sidebar location in settings, and changing that to right. This is purely preference, but for me it looks a lot better, and feels more natural to have everything on this side. One of the things I've always disliked about VS Code was how the activity bar takes up a lot of room on the side. It just doesn't look great. Cursor by default positions this above the explorer, which I think makes a lot more sense. If you want to do this in VS Code, just search for activity bar orientation and set it to horizontal. Now, I've found that as my files grow in size, it becomes a real pain to scroll through them, and I somehow just found out that you can enable the scroll bar minimap, which gives you a preview of the entire file on the side that lets you click or scroll through it to jump to a certain location. I can't tell you how convenient this has been after struggling to navigate navigate through my Go files, which are all getting to like a thousand lines plus while working on my SAS dashboard template. Another setting you want to have enabled in large files is word wrap. I think this is enabled by default, but I recommend you remember the shortcut, which is Option Z on Mac and Alt Z on Windows. Next, I like to bump up the font size because 12 pixels as the default is too small when working on an ultra wide monitor, which is where I do the majority of my coding. I will change it around depending on how much I want to see, but 14 to 15 is where I can easily read it and still fit a lot of code in the window. Another setting that I found about very recently is the smooth carrot animation. And this is again, purely for aesthetics, but it will animate your cursor to wherever you click. And as you type, it moves very smoothly. On video, this is gonna be very hard to see, but trust me, just try it to see if you like it. You might not, but for me, I really enjoy the feel because the animation is very fluid and it has that same feeling when you drag a window across a high refresh fresh display. It's just so good. You can also customize the cursor blinking effect. I like phase, which transitions in and out, and expand, which shrinks and grows instead of blinking. Now, in VS Code, if you look right below the file tabs, you'll see the breadcrumbs for your current file, and these can be useful, but personally, I don't like having them. You can turn them off by searching breadcrumbs in settings and unticking the checkbox. I believe this is a defaulting cursor, and what you're probably starting to notice is that cursor does change some of the defaults so that the editor out of the box feels cleaner. Now, if you're constantly working with HTML or some flavor like JSX, having the tags be automatically renamed is a must. This is actually built in now with linked editing, but for some reason it's not working as well for me, so I'm sticking with the auto rename tag extension that I've used for years. Now, with all those settings configured, I like to download a separate app that actually makes my coding experience a lot nicer. This app is Raycast, and if you've watched my channel at all over the last year, you'll know just how much of a fan of it I am. It's a spotlight replacement with tons of features built in, and one that's really nice is you can add aliases and shortcuts to any app. For example, if you wanted to switch from VS Code to Cursor, you can add an alias of VS Code to Cursor so that whenever you type in VS Code by habit, it'll pop up first. Secondly, and what I think is the most powerful, is adding a shortcut to quickly open the app. 
This is available in macOS natively, but it's a little faster to set up within Raycast. I've set Control 2 to immediately open up cursor, and I can't tell you how convenient that's been. I switch between my browser with Control 1, Terminal with Control 3, and HTTP client with Control 6. I can just fly through all of my apps, so I highly recommend that you do this. Now, extensions are what makes VS Code so powerful. There's tons of things you can use to make the editor yours. The first one I always make sure to download is Project Manager. This is a must if you're someone like me who works on a lot of different apps. This lets you set up quick shortcuts to as many of your projects as you need, so right from within VS Code, you can swap between them. I also just recently installed Bookmarks, which lets you mark important positions within your apps, so you don't have to go searching for them later. You can leave an unnamed bookmark or make it more descriptive, and I think this is really useful if you have side projects you work on randomly and don't want to forget where you left off or have something you need to fix. A similar extension for the latter use case is better comments, and this makes your comments stand out a lot more. It'll automatically highlight to-dos, alerts, questions you leave, etc. This can be very useful if you work with other people, but I've gotten into the habit of just leaving these to-dos randomly throughout my projects, and being able to quickly identify them is important. Now, there's a few extensions I like to use for general code quality and documentation. The first is Code Spell Checker, which is very self-explanatory, but this can be useful to catch mistakes as you're typing a landing page, or just writing text within your app that you don't want people seeing. Next is Prettier, which we all know, but I can't imagine coding without it. It automatically formats your code to be consistent, which not having to think about is great. Now, if you work with APIs and JSON a lot, chances are you have to constantly write types in TypeScript or Go based on that JSON, and a phenomenal extension I wish I hadn't just found out about is paste JSON as code. What you can do is take some JSON you get from an API response and then command shift V it. What you can do is take some JSON you get from an API response, for example, and then select which language language you'd like to convert it to. You can turn this into a TypeScript interface, a Go struct, but something really cool as I've been working with AI models recently is Zod. This means I could just write the JSON format I want and instantly have it in a structure that any model can understand and give back to me. The last code quality sort of extension is Mintlify, and this is probably the coolest extension I've come across recently. What you can do is highlight a function and then have it auto-generate docs for you following the correct language syntax. In the TypeScript case, this is JS Docs. This is very helpful to have in large projects or model repos where you'll be importing a lot of helper functions, so being able to hover and quickly remember the params is nice. The next category of extensions is what I'll call visual enhancements, and these make reading and debugging your code a lot easier. The first is error lens, which will print errors and warnings in line, which is super convenient. For example, if I write an incorrect return type, it'll immediately highlight the whole line and print the error in red to display what's wrong. This makes the chance I forget about it and have to fix it later much lower. A similar extension is pretty TypeScript errors. I honestly think this is a must have for any TypeScript dev, as it prints the errors in a much more readable format. Next, if you ever work with images in your apps, image preview is something you'll almost certainly want to install. This will put a preview of the image on its line, and when you hover over the URL, it pops up with a preview showing the file's size and dimensions. This has been great for me to ensure that the image I'm including in my newsletter actually exists. This last visual one is in no way functional, so to speak, but it's Discord Presence, which will show the game you're playing in Discord as Visual Studio Code, and optionally, show the file you're working in. Next up, we have some extensions that are more general dev tools. When you're working on a project with a team, or even just on larger personal projects, I highly recommend the GitLens extension. This will show you an inline blame, so you can see when a commit was made that changed that line, who by, and the message. You can then hover over this to take more actions on that specific of a commit like viewing it on GitHub. You might want to pair this with the GitHub pull request extension that lets you view and review PRs right in the editor. Next, as you import various packages, you want to make sure you're not adding tons of bloat throughout your project, and import cost is a nice extension for that. It'll show in line next to the import statement the cost of that package. Now, if you're frequently working on remote machines, remote SSH is an extension you'll almost definitely want to have. For example, I have an EC2 instance that I've been playing around with 
recently and deployed a couple of Go apps. I can use Remote SSH to work directly on that machine and configure things like Nginx or Docker files right in VS Code. Now, the last two extensions I'll mention are language slash framework specific, the first being Tailwind CSS. Tailwind IntelliSense will give you suggestions for specific Tailwind classes, and if you hover over one of them, you can see the raw underlying CSS. Lastly, I use MDX to write a lot of my newsletters because you can embed React components like a custom image right inside of the markdown. The MDX extension provides syntax highlighting, which makes working in these files a lot nicer. Now, to end off the video, I want to talk about Cursor specifically and why I personally use it over VS Code. If you don't know what Cursor is, it integrates a ton of AI features into the editor that can make developing apps a lot more efficient. One of my favorite features is Cursor Tab, which will try to predict as you're writing what you want to do next. And over the months I've used Cursor, it's only gotten better. What I use more often is the Command K Quick AI, which lets you highlight a block of code and either ask a question or tell Cursor to make some changes. This can be super helpful for fixing a TypeScript error or even mocking up UIs. One of the more recent features is the Composer, which with agent mode is able to create, delete, modify files, and run terminal commands to build out your app. This has been incredibly helpful for things like refactors or building new UIs that might need some extra components. I personally use Claude Sana as the model and cursor, but they offer a ton of other options from Anthropic, DeepSeek, OpenAI, and I'm pretty sure more recently Google. VS Code is now more deeply integrated in Copilot, and honestly, I haven't used it in quite some time, but the last time I did, it just wasn't on the same level as Cursor. I recommend you give both a shot, but what's nice about Cursor is it'll automatically import all of your VS Code extensions and settings, so you can very slowly get into trying the various features that Cursor offers. In its specific settings, you can give the AI rules to use all the time. For example, I prefer concise and lowercase comments. You're also able to add a dot cursor rules file to the root of your project, which will instruct the AI to generate suggestions following the guidelines you give it. In addition to having context of your code base, you can add documentation that it's able to reference when generating code so it's more reliable. So that's been how I set up cursor slash VS code to make my dev experience more enjoyable. I hope you found some value from this video, and if you did, you might want to subscribe to my weekly newsletter that I send out every Sunday morning. I document the things that I'm building and share useful resources that I come across, so I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in that. Thank you for watching, and take care.